Now that summer is here, the need to keep essentials cool is greater than ever. If you get confused by compressor, absorption, electrolytic, 12 volt, mains, gas, then keep watching and I'll try and help you decide which fridge is best for your van. Thanks for watching our video and as always if you have any questions or feedback please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful please like, share and consider subscribing. Before we start looking at fridges you might ask yourself the question do I really need one? If you're only using your van for a few days away at a time you can save money and power by using a high quality ice box. Obviously these use no power at all from your van, they don't take any installing, they can't really break down and they'll keep things cool for two to three days with a good amount of ice or ice packs. Don't be fooled into thinking all ice boxes are the same, the higher end ones have much better thermal properties than the cheaper ones. If you've decided you do need a fridge, the choices can be complicated, but here are a few options with some pros and cons that might help you decide. You will see 12 volt cool boxes and mini fridges advertised pretty cheaply. These use thermoelectric cooling, which creates a heat flux at the junction of two different types of materials. A thermoelectric or pelter cooler is solid state active heat pump which transfers heat from inside the box to outside using electrical energy. They are low cost but they have high power usage and only really suitable to use when the engine is running. There's no thermostats that are on all the time and they have a limited cooling capacity so aren't effective in high ambient temperatures. There's no ability to freeze and because the constantly running fan they can be noisy. Next we have absorption fridges. These use a refrigerant with a very low boiling point. When the refrigerant evaporates it takes some heat away with it providing the cooling effect. In an absorption fridge the gas is changed back into a liquid using a method that needs only heat and has no moving parts other than a refrigerant itself. Because of the way it works three way versions can run on gas, 240 volts or 12 volts though the 12 volt is only suitable when the engine is running as it's not very efficient. Because they run very efficiently on gas they're great for off-grid use if you already have a gas installation. They have fridge areas and freezer areas, a totally silent in operation, there are more of them available second hand, they're cheaper new than compressor fridges. Something to bear in mind is that in very hot weather they can start to struggle but an additional electric fan to improve the ventilation behind the fridge can improve this. You can see this in our hacks video which I'll link to at the end and in the video notes. They are more complicated to install as they need both power and gas connection and they need to be vented to the exterior of the van. Older models do need the van to be level to work effectively. Now let's look at 12 volt compressor fridges. Very basically, a compressor fridge also uses a refrigerant which evaporates to provide the cooling effect. The refrigerant is changed to a superheated vapour using a compressor and then flash evaporated. This involves quite a complex design of motor, compressor, expansion valves, condenser and pipes and has lots of moving parts. Although they are pretty reliable, due to being more complex there is more opportunity for failure. They're efficient on 12 volt and with a reasonable battery bank, solar or split charging they can work effectively off grid. They can be a little noisy when the compressor is running and they are expensive, new and hard to find second hand. They are really easy to install just needing a power connection and not requiring ventilation to the outside of the van. Next we'll look at the option of using a 240 volt household compressor fridge and an inverter. This is not something I have done but some have and it may be an option you want to consider. The fridge works with the same principles as the 12 volt compressor version. To work reliably and efficiently you would probably need a top of the range and quite expensive inverter with an auto standby function. Home fridges may not cope well with the rough treatment and vibrations of van life and most specify that they need to be stood for a period of between 2 and 8 hours to settle after being transported. 
household fridges are usually heavier than camper van for specific fridges for the same capacity, plus you have the weight of the inverter. Some people have hacked household fridges and freezers, disabling the built-in thermostat and fitting a 12 volt thermostat to switch the inverter directly on and off, but due to the technical complexity and my lack of experience with this method, I've not included this in the options. This table is my view of how the different types of fridges compare. In our vans over the years we've had a thermoelectric cool box, a 12 volt compressor and a three way absorption fridge and they've all got their pros and cons. You really need to look at your individual usage profile to decide which is best for you. Once you've decided on how your fridge should be cooled, the design of the fridge can make a big difference to its efficiency. As you can see in this thermal imaging, Every time you open the door of a front entry fridge, you lose cold air due to it leaking out the bottom. Although a chest style fridge may be harder to fit into your build, they are much better at retaining the cold when open. Finally, to try and help you decide, here are some scenarios and the choice I would make in those scenarios. If you ever only have a few days away with no requirement for a freezer, I'd go for a good quality ice box with lots of ice and ice packs. For a longer off-grid capability and you already have gas and you fancy a silent operation which is highly reliable, I would go with a three-way absorption fridge. If you already have solar and a good battery and you don't mind the noise of a compressor which is easy to install and you don't mind the cost for the best solution, I would go with a 12 volt compressor fridge. Finally, if you already have good solar and battery and a high end suitably rated inverter would be useful for other things, you don't mind the weight, are happy to accept some reliability risk and a bit of a hack, then a 240 volt compressor fridge and inverter is possibly worth a try to save some cost. Whatever solution you go for, here are some tips to help make it as efficient as possible. Always pre-chill your fridge and the contents on mains before leaving on a trip. Pack it efficiently, avoiding blocking cooling vanes or air outlets, and if possible, order your items so that you can get to the things you want first or regularly to limit the opening of the door. Once off grid, use a fridge thermometer to set your thermostat to keep the fridge at the optimum temperature. There's no point using more power than you need to to keep it cooler than it needs to be. If you're going to use an absorption fridge in very high temperatures, so that's more than 30 degrees C, you might consider adding an additional fan to increase the ventilation. We included this in our hacks video, which you can find here. And in very cold conditions, eight degrees C or lower, covering the air vents, not the gas flue, will keep this fridge running effectively. You can buy covers from the manufacturer specifically or they're very easy to make. Hopefully what I've shared today has helped you with your choice of fridge. If you have any questions, just pop them in the comments. If monocrystalline, polycrystalline, MPPT and PWM set your head spinning, make sure you catch our next video where I'll try to help you decide what to consider when choosing your solar setup. Is this the perfect 12 volt TV for your van? I'll share details and our review in an upcoming video.